This topology exercise is going to increase your IQ score by about 15%. I had a student from the Digitally Enhanced Club ask me a question, Aryan. I'm modeling this knife and it's got these ridges on the handle over here. How would you make these with good topology? How would you improve the topology? This is what he sent me. So I told him I'd make a video to show him how I would do this with perfect topology. Okay, now guys, just a warning. This is hard. Okay, making this model is difficult. If you can get through this, you can get through anything. Just keep in mind, this is why we're doing this. You're going to be able to do something that nobody else can get through, which is going to separate you from the crowd. And it's a very valuable ability to have in this world. Okay. Now, look, I tried fucking around with this a few times. Of course, this is when you're modeling something. You try it a couple times. It fucks up. It doesn't work. And then on the fifth attempt, it ends up working. This is anything in life. And this is what I figured is the best solution for this. All right. You have to notice that we have these little holes here. And they're on this bevel sort of surface. You can see the shading is a little bit different on this surface. This surface up here is flat. Now, I always tell people in my videos, when you're modeling something like this, you always want to start with the sophisticated part first, with the part that needs very specific geometry, okay, which needs topology or which needs geometry arranged in a very specific way to work. And then you shoot the simple parts like this flat surface over here out of that, okay? So here's what you're going to do with Shift A, we're going to add a mesh cube or mesh plane or whatever. Edit mode X, dissolve edges and faces or collapse edges and faces. It's going to turn everything into one vertex. We're now going to place this vertex on the beginning of this hole where we have this little white line or this little line separating these two surfaces. Extrude it to the other side of the hole, then extrude it up to the next hole, then extrude it across that next hole, then extrude it across this little surface, across the next hole and so on. I'm not going to go over the entire thing. I'm just going to cover a couple of holes here because I don't want to sit here for three days and showing you guys the same thing on multiple different holes. But you guys get the idea. You can do the rest if you want to. And then we're going to use our W loop tools relax just to make sure this looks a little bit smoother and nicer. And at this point, we can now add W loop tools space. And if you don't have your loop tools right here, if you don't know what I'm doing right now, just look up Aryan loop tools. I made some other tutorials about this. It's a very important and very simple tool, but you have to activate it in the settings and stuff like that. So if you're not familiar with this, then go check out my Blender Loop Tools tutorial. And then you have to do something else. You have to add some more vertices. So you have to go W, W, subdivide, okay? Because now you have a vertex in the middle of each of these little holes. And here's how you're gonna make the little holes, all right? You're gonna extrude this out, make a little triangle up here, align this part with the hole. And then you're gonna extrude one, two, that's a quad right there. And then once again, you're going to extrude one, two, that's a hole right there as well. And you want to use your loop tool space here to make sure these are equally long and everything like that. And we're going to do the same thing over here one more time, triangle and one, two, that's a quad. Okay, maybe a little bit shorter. And then one, two, that's another quad. Okay, I know this looks very strange right now. But trust me, when you see the final result, it's going to make perfect sense to you. Although it might even make sense to wire these as a uh, as uh, triangles right now, but let's see what's going to work better. Probably they're going to end up as triangles anyway. Okay. So now we can do one, two, fill again. And I'm, this is just the last one that I'm going to do. So you guys can do the rest yourself if you want to, because I don't want to do every, I don't want to do eight different holes. You guys understand the idea. Okay. And now when you have this kind of shape now, of course, you're supposed to have this for everything else. You're going to be able to extrude this edge segment here. Okay. And you want to rotate this into place a little bit so it aligns with the reference image here. The reference, we got a little knife. And maybe you even want to use your loop tools G stretch to straighten this out if you want to. Maybe you want to use your loop tools relax, set that to linear, and repeat this. Or we use space, we should have used relax, set that to linear, and set the number of iterations to something like 10, okay? Just to make sure this is nice and smooth and organized and all this, okay? And now, of course, since this is sort of supposed to be a little bit beveled, this is supposed to be downwards, we're going to take this edge loop and we're going to lower it a little bit. Okay, this is where you're supposed to use your side reference, but I don't give a shit about a side reference, I'm just going to lower it. So there's some some depth just based on my eyeballs. Okay. So now once you've sort of sloped this downwards, and you might have to push it up to make sure you got the angle right. Now you can use your brush tool to select these sections like this. And you're going to extrude those downwards a little bit. All right. 
you're going to extrude them downward and once you do that you have to clean up you have to get rid of these faces at the ends here and then we can take all these edges like this on the bottom of these little extrusions like this okay and we're just going to bevel them control b i want to turn this into three segments like this okay like this and when we do that when we do that we have to clean up these bottoms of the holes so on an example like this we can just use double g and slide this down to merge everything together here as well over here it's a little bit dirty so we can't really do that because i don't know which is the central vertex here so we can just take everything scale it to zero and then slide these together over here select everything m merge by distance and now you cleaned up your holes okay the top part is flat and everything is looking pretty good now I always tell people in my videos, when you're working topology, you want to try and have geometric consistency. So you want to try and keep your edges, little quads and little tiles, and you want everything to be approximately the same size and shape. And I'm just going to clean these up a little bit more. So here we have some very long faces, but here I have little tiles, little square tiles. So I'm going to add some loop cuts just to improve my geometric consistency. And how many you want to add depends on whether you want to have nice tiles here or on the inside over here, it doesn't really fucking matter. Let's just add four loop cuts like this and we're gonna be fine. Or maybe three loop cuts like this and we're gonna be fine. It doesn't really matter too much in this case. And now this is where things get really, really interesting. Because of course we're gonna have to use a subdivision service modifier, but the tricky part is we're gonna have to keep this part over here sharp because this is about to turn flat. So first you want to make the little flat surface on the top and to do that, we're going to extrude this vertex here around the circle one, two, three, four, five. Of course, we got to push it out a little bit more and then select these edges around the top and these edges out here, W bridge edge loops. There you go. And we're going to do the same thing over here with this next hole. One, okay, one, two, three, four, five. And of course, you're going to do this a little bit more precisely and in a more in a nicer way than I'm doing right now because I'm rushing for the tutorial because I don't want to watch you guys I don't want to have you guys watching me fucking lining up vertices for 10 hours because you guys understand the point here. And then we can fill this at another quad over here. Just we got to be careful how this is going to affect our flow or maybe it's better if we join these here together. And of course, you're going to do that with all the others there as well. And once you do that, because you have to pay attention to how your uh, flow is when you select an edge loop or a face loop with alt right click. You got to make sure it's predictable and it's not twisting all over the place and shooting everywhere. If we had quads down here, that's what would happen. It would be folding in on itself and it would be twisted and it would cause you all sorts of problems. Okay. So now this allows us to very simply make the surface, the flat surface at the top with a good topology. Okay. As Thomas Collin has taught us. And we're going to take this little segment over here, W loop tools, G stretch. We're going to straighten this out. You can adjust this if you want to make this look a little bit nicer. You can make these flow a little bit better if you want to, but that's besides the point right now. And see, now we have this sharp cut over here, but I want to add my subdivision surface modifier. So how am I going to add a subdivision surface modifier without fucking up this little sharp edge? So control two, control three. Now this is no longer a sharp edge anymore. So what are we supposed to do? I'll tell you what we're supposed to do. Okay. First of all, let's get rid of these edge loops at the top of these holes here. Slide them up, merge by distance. And we're going to select all the edges around these holes and with N, we're going to set a mean crease here. Now, guys, professionals don't use mean creases. This is not supposed to be visible in your final model. It's just supposed to assist you in creating your final model. Your final model should not have any creases or anything like that. OK, so just keep that in mind. This is just something we're using to make sure that we end up getting our topology nice and clean. And you might want to lift this up a little bit just to control the angle here. If you want to maybe use a shear tool, but I don't want to worry about that now. And also, let's just take one final look to make sure that these look nice and round and smooth. For example, maybe we want to move this out a little bit to adjust the shape down here. OK, but this is what you're going to have to do yourself. You're going to have to go around the model and make sure that everything is flowing nicely. I don't want to do that too much right now. So now let's add one level of subdivision surface. We're going to apply that with control A. And we have to recognize now where is the line? The line is this, this, this and this, I believe. So this is where we're supposed to have a line that as you can see, the subdivision surface modifier made this curved. We're going to go W loop tools G stretch. OK, spread evenly. That's fine. We have to make sure that this is straight. And then here's the most important part here in making sure that this is sharp. We're going to select these surfaces over here like this. We're going to select all those surfaces. 
we're going to deselect all the horizontal edge loops. We're going to keep these vertical edge loops selected and we're going to go W loop to G stretch. Okay. Spread evenly. That's going to turn these into straight lines. So now they're no longer curved like this. Okay. Now they're all straight lines because of the G stretch tool. And all you have to do now is place the 3D cursor around here somewhere. Select the surface at the top and it would have been easier if we would have marked our seams up here or something so we can select this more easily. But now we can just select everything manually. It's not a problem. Okay. Like this. And we're going to turn everything here into a flat surface. So with our 3D cursors at a point, we can scale this down to zero like this. And there we have our sharp edge again. Now, the one more thing that you have to keep in mind is, first of all, you have bad geometry flow over here because of these quads down here. You can fix that by joining these into triangles and just sliding them inwards a little bit so you don't have quads anymore. Now you have little triangles. That's going to work a million times better, okay? Because now when you select these, it's going to end here instead of flowing and moving into another direction like it did over here. Okay, this is just bad topology. Thomas Collin is going to agree with me on this. You don't want to have this. This is what I learned from him. You don't want to have your fucking edge flows shooting all over the place like a highway, okay? So you just make sure to join these in the triangles. And another thing you want to, of course, be able to, uh, you want to have your nice smooth shading on this. Right now, if you use object shade smooth, shading is shitty. So we have to bevel this. And to bevel this, all you have to do is select all these tops around these holes, okay? And then select these sharp edges over here. Select all the edges which you want to sharpen like this. And you're going to bevel that, control B, Control B, like this, just a small bevel to sharpen it. You're going to set the shape value here to one, and you want to have two segments. And there you have it. Now your, kni your knife is nice and sharp, and you have your beautiful topology here. Everything is pretty much on point. I wonder what Thomas Collin would think about this. Of course, you would spend a little bit more time cleaning this up to making it flow better and everything, but this is how you make this blade or this handle with good topology. All right, this is how you would do it. All right. If you want to ask me a question, you can do so on my Patreon page. I make videos to answer questions for people if you need some support with your personal project. But if you want to learn more about Blender, if you want to learn how to become a professional 3D artist, how to get into the industry and find some work and some paid jobs and build your portfolio and network with people and all this other shit, then check out the Digitally Enhanced Club. Okay, that's our Blender school. We're going to take care of you. We're going to teach you everything you need to know. And let me know in the comments what you want to see next, and I'll see you in the next one.